She grew up on a farm in western Washington where winters are wet. Evergreens blanket the surrounding peaks and snow-capped St. Helens is towering above them, with mostly mundane morning views by the middling mist. Her formative years, the 70s, the era was fire and brimstone. Her father, a preacher of such. He had an active career in the spotlight, with a heart for the needy, a heart for service, a heart to be seen, leaving little room in his heart for his family. As a preacher's kid, worn like proud jewels by their parents and symbols of their morality, discipline, and honor, she grew up in a fishbowl. The eldest daughter of four, she took the responsibilities of babysitting and tending extra chores, resulting in a fishbowl within a fishbowl, overwatched by detached parents. Her looks were homely, and her father would remind her of such. A man of the army, his hand of discipline was strong, his tongue sometimes cruel and his standards high. She became a tomboy, hardened by the words surrounding her about her robust features, her commanding presence and manly prowess. The femininity in her downplayed, overlooked, insulted. Nurturing replaced with command, makeup with war paint, beauty with accolades. She grew up this way, cemented in this way of being in the world and layers of rules. She found solace in swimming, in ministry and service, and the deep satisfaction of an independent life. Until she met a partner, a man to see the beauty of her strength, the beauty of her figure, the beauty of her femininity, and the permission to be such. The inner beauty illuminated through the eyes of another. The eyes of love. The eyes that behold the fullness and hold the grief. The eyes to truly be seen and healed.